Well, disappointing, of course, you know, against the USA, you'd have to say that, you know, and I'm sure Fabio Capello's looked at the video and he's thought exactly the same. Um, there were certain aspects of the game that weren't great, but um, how many other teams are struggling? You know, that's the way you've got to look at it. Italy struggling, Spain struggling, Brazil, you know, getting by, fortunately. Argentina, they won comfortable today, but they still could have conceded goals. You know, so we're still in there fighting and you just know that, you know, it's the first bad performance that England have had under Fabio Capello. You know, so he saved it all for the first game in the World Cup. And hopefully that's it gone and out the way. And, you know, um, now that the lads realise, well, they'll realise, they'll all know what the country wants and expects. And, you know, you expect them to perform really well uh, on Friday against Algeria. There's no doubt about he'll make changes for the Algeria game. I think I'm an absolute certainty to make changes. I'm not sure which ones he'll make. You know, in an ideal world, I think, you know, I'm like anybody else. And you look at it and you pick your own team. You know, that, that's got to go out the window now. You know, Fabio's the man and, you know, everyone's had their say. All the British press have had their say. They all look at it. We all think that 4-5-1 is the best way forward. But, you know, that's nothing to do with us. It's to do with the manager. Germany were fantastic, there's no doubt about it. You know, they have, they've had an opportunity to play with the ball before anybody else, which, when you watch them, made no difference to their performance against Australia. They were fantastic. You know, whether they played with the ball or they hadn't, you've still got to have the movement, the cohesion, um, the togetherness, the pattern of play, the finishing. They had all that together, so it was great. That was terrific to watch. Argentina are the ones I took for the World Cup before it started. My only reservation was um, Diego Maradona. And the reason for that is because in the qualifying matches he made five and six changes after every defeat. Now, if he did that in the World Cup, you know that the players are going to lose heart. What happened though was they won the first game. So when you win your first game like he did, you only make one or two at the most changes and you only do them because of injury. So Diego Maradona at this moment in time is probably managing better than he's ever managed in his managerial career so far. So that gives them a real chance, you know, unless they come up with a hiding uh, by in the third third game. But then he, he probably thinks, oh, we've already qualified. We've got the six points in the bag now. And maybe I'm just going to try one or two players out. But, oh, but now he's got a sense of what his best team is, who can perform in the World Cup. So they've got a fantastic chance. They've got a real good chance. But we're not out of it. By no means are we out of it. We'll beat Algeria on Friday and then when we beat Algeria on Friday people will start to take us a little bit more serious. Well, I mean I was um, interested to see that Diego Forlan seems to be half the Uruguayan team. You know, quite amazing really, you know, that uh, his performance, you know, when we remember what he was like at England at Manchester United and he was a bit part player, to become the player that he has for his country, it's just, it's just amazing really. And uh, I, I, I really um, didn't fancy him at all against the home nation um, because he thought, well, South Africa is written, the script, the home team normally goes through. No, no home team has ever not failed to qualify. Um, so he'd find life difficult. But there was only one man that stood in the way of South Africa in getting through, and that was Diego Fallon. He's the man in the World Cup tournament for me so far.